Welcome back everybody, my name is Stocker and in today's video I wanted to once again talk about 2021 NBA free agency and the reason being is a lot of plans have changed over the last couple of days for a handful of teams in 2021 free agency, whether that be because their plan was going after someone like potentially Paul George or Giannis Antetokounmpo or as of a couple of weeks ago, maybe even they had plans of going after LeBron James. Uh, and now the, the list of high profile free agency targets in the summer 2021 has shrunk considerably. And so I wanted to talk about a handful of notable teams within that summer that were planning on making big moves and talking about what they could potentially do now. What kind of their backup plan? What's their plan B now for the summer 2021? And that's what I wanna talk about in today's video. But quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every day, and it's a great place for consistent NBA content. You can also leave a like rating on the video as well. Helps me out a ton, lets me know that you're enjoying the videos and helps it get out to more people on YouTube as well. With those things said, let's go ahead and get started and talk about all these different things uh, that could potentially be backup plans for these various teams. So I would say arguably the most notable summer of 2021 team to this point has been the Dallas Mavericks. There's been other teams, of course, that get talked about, uh, but I think Dallas, because they've got that foundation of Luka Doncic, who looks like a, a future MVP caliber guy, uh, Chris Tapp Porzingis, who went healthy as an all-star caliber player, and clearly they have a need on this roster for either a couple of really good complimentary players or one more really good player, kind of that star guy that really completes what they have going there in Dallas. And so I was thinking about, you know, what else they could potentially chase after in the summer of 2021. And in the past, what, whether it's been this upcoming summer or otherwise for Dallas, it's always been kind of about perimeter guys, right? Uh, you know, whether it was trying to get Kemba Walker or Chris Mills in last off season, they tried to do the DeAndre Jordan thing a while ago and they actually landed him a few summers ago as well. But for the most part, I've been thinking about perimeter players. But what about Rudy Gobert in Dallas uh, as a free agent in the summer of 2021? I don't know exactly what's gonna happen with Gobert's contract in Utah, uh, how motivated they're gonna be to potentially re-sign him. You would imagine they'd be motivated to bring him back, but it, you know, if the scenario exists that Rudy Gobert is like, I want a max or nothing else, maybe he ends up leaving. Maybe it's a situation similar um, to what happened with Kemba Walker with the Charlotte Hornets, where he asked for more money than they were willing to give. He ends up going to Boston. And I think I like the Rudy Gobert fit there in Dallas. The one thing that I would question would be, a, getting value back if you do offer him a max contract, making sure that you're actually getting a good production out of a max level player. And two, Chris Epps Porzingis has played a good amount of the five there uh, at, at times in Dallas. Now it's been a bit more of a spacing role, like he's been on the perimeter and maybe been the biggest guy on the floor, but there's other guys like Dwight Powell otherwise that could have been, you know, rolling to the rim or Maxi Kleber maybe being a bit more of a rim roller. They've been using him plenty in pick and rolls, but uh, do you trust and do you believe in you know, Luca, Porzingis, and then Gobert, you know, being your best three guys with two of those players being front court players. And if you want to have your best guys on the floor at the end of games, Porzingis and Gobert would have to play together at the same time. Now, defensively, assuming that Porzingis is healthy, this should really, really help Dallas. And I think that's a place that they can improve the most. Um, it, it's it's not super difficult for them to find ways to score, whether it be with Luca, Porzingis, they can have Rudy Gobert on the offensive glass, they'll have shooters around them, have like one more extra playmaker so that Luca doesn't have to do all the playmaking for the entire game. Um, and as long as Gobert is at least competent on the offensive end, they should be really, really good there. And defensively, especially from a rim protection standpoint, they should be really, really good um, with, with that much size. And, you know, one of those two guys is going to be on the floor probably for most of the game, if not the entire game. So if you have that room protection constantly, whether it's Gobert at the five or both of them on the floor or Porzingis sliding over to the five. Um, ball screen stuff could be a bit of an issue because Gobert hasn't been an outstanding pick and roll uh, defender at times. And when teams go a little bit smaller, it could be a problem. But at the same time, if they go up against a team that wants to go smaller, unless it's the Lakers that are like running LeBron at the four or something and AD at the five, which would be a tough matchup, obviously, for Dallas, um, I'm not sure how many teams are going to be able to successfully go small against that lineup just because of the size and the length uh, that the Mavs have to offer there. And it would be tough for Porzingis to, to guard fours, obviously, at times, but they could go zone. Carlisle's been really creative in the past about what they can possibly do defensively. And I just think that this would be an interesting pairing. Rudy Gobert going to the Dallas Mavericks in the summer of 2021, that being their quote unquote big three, you've got Luca, Porzingis, Gobert, and then you fill the rest out with complimentary options. I'd be interested in seeing something like that in Dallas now that they can no longer go after someone like Giannis Antetokounmpo. The next team I wanted to talk about would be the Miami Heat. And there's a lot of options they can go in here. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up being the James Harden team. Now without Giannis being an option to come to Miami, they've got trade options here. Uh, but the one guy that I would potentially keep in mind for them, assuming they're able to carve out the salary cap space, 
would be potentially Kawhi Leonard. I'm not saying that Kawhi wants to leave LA. I'm not saying that he wants to, that he doesn't want to be a Clipper anymore. I'm not saying that he regrets the move. But if there's one place that I could potentially see Kawhi leaving for, I think Miami is at or near the top of the list. I feel like there's a there's a, uh, a culture thing that fits together well between what Kawhi wants to do culture-wise and what the Heat want to do. Uh, you know, he's a two-way player, which is what they typically try and target. Him and Jimmy Butler playing together would be obviously an interesting combination. It's something that has apparently been discussed in the past. And again, I'm still thinking that Kawhi is going to stay in LA with Paul George and they're going to figure it out over multiple years. But if there's a complete disaster scenario in LA this season, Maybe Kawhi going to the Heat uh, is the option that he goes towards. I don't think he's going to go to the Lakers as long as LeBron is still there. Uh, and maybe just getting away from the Clippers is his best option. He goes to Miami uh, and they form a really nice super team there as well with him, Bam, and Jimmy Butler, one of the best defensive uh, teams in the entire league. That would be a very, very interesting addition, in my opinion, is a possible plan B, a very good plan B there for Miami. Next up now is another really interesting 2021 NBA free agency team, and it's the San Antonio Spurs. And my thought was... For the most part, it seems like San Antonio is going to try, try and continue to push towards being a good team, being a playoff team, trying to be, you know, one of the better teams in the West as long as Greg Popovich wants to continue to coach. And unless they trade LaMarcus Aldridge or DeMar DeRozan, that means that those two guys will probably be brought back on smaller deals in that summer of 2021 if they're able to bring them back on those smaller deals. And then why don't they go after someone like Victor Oladipo in that offseason, assuming that Indiana lets him go, assuming he wants to leave, assuming San Antonio is a place that he would like to be. I think that's a really interesting fit as a two-way player that kind of wants to rehab their image a bit, assuming he doesn't have an outstanding season in Indiana. As long as they can make the money work between those three players, that would be a really cool addition. And I know that San Antonio has some younger guards that they're still trying to figure out, you know, who they want to go where. Uh, in terms of you know the future of their team with those backward players. But if there's an opportunity to bring in Victor Oladipo, I think that would be uh, definitely an interesting option for San Antonio to explore. I think it's mutually beneficial. Uh, and again, that would be kind of their, uh, you know, I know Oladipo is like 29 or 30 now, but they're just gonna continue to push towards trying to be a good team constantly as, as, wrong, as long as Popovich is still there. Um, and I think Victor Oladipo would be an interesting backup plan there for San Antonio. Two teams left now, the next one, is the Toronto Raptors, who were obviously heavily invested in the Giannis Antetokounmpo sweepstakes that now no longer exist. Uh, they've got some free agency decisions to make of their own in terms of their own roster that offseason with Kyle Lowry being a free agent. But let's just assume that now that they've got Van Vliet signed long term, they've got Siakam signed long term, let's just assume they want to continue to be the Raptors. They want to continue to be good. Uh, you know, they, they, they sign OG and Obi to a nice deal. They bring back Kyle Lowry. What's stopping them from going out and getting someone like like Andre Drummond or something, or Andre Drummond plus other complimentary pieces. And then you've got Lowry, Van Vliet, Ananobi, Siakam, and then Drummond. I, I'm not a huge Andre Drummond guy, but if you're looking at someone to kind of help fill that role at the five spot, I think he would be an interesting one uh, to take a look at. Would really help them rebounding wise. I think Nick Nurse is one of the best coaches in the league. He would figure out a way to make him, you know, an active and an engaged defender and a good offensive player as well. Uh, a nice rim roller. I don't think he'd be like terribly expensive. Like he wouldn't be like a $25 million a year guy or anything. Uh, but in terms of just a way to kind of round out their lineup, I think he would be uh, a really interesting option to explore there for Toronto. Last up now on the list is the New York Knicks. Constantly players in free agency. And aside from like some crazy scenario where they end up with Kawhi or they trade for James Harden to become a free agency destination, I kind of think the option here for the Knicks is to try and capitalize on the trade assets that they have. So you would go out and you would kind of just bring in really good complimentary players and make your roster look way more like a situation that's conducive to a star being there and being successful. So you bring in someone like potentially JJ Redick, Josh Richardson, Serge Ibaka, guys like that, and they've got three first round picks in 2021. So they could be looking at a scenario where they've got RJ Barrett, Mitchell Robinson, some nice complimentary pieces there, maybe Obi Toppin wins rookie of the year. And then they've got these trade assets where they can go out and they can get a star and then suddenly they're a playoff team and they're a good team in the East. I, I don't necessarily think that just given the, the players that are not gonna be available anymore in the summer of 2021, I don't necessarily think that just playing for big time free agents is a good idea for the Knicks anymore. And more so they should be going towards that trade option, trying to be as attractive of, of a trade destination as possible. Um, and then going forward from there and, and trying to get that star power in New York, developing RJ Barrett and Mitchell Robinson, and that's probably their best path forward now without Giannis, uh, without Paul George, without LeBron, without any of those guys available in that summer of 2021. Whether you ever thought they were actually in on those guys or not, I'm not sure. But I think that would be 
one of the better options for them moving forward is uh, we've learned this for teams like the Clippers and the Nets that are typically not free agency destinations apart from their location. As long as you show a good you know, level of competence, free agents are going to want to go there. Free agents are going to want to uh, you know, be a part of what you're building. And so if they bring in some complimentary players um, to be able to attract those future free agents as well as to bring in a potential star in trade, I think that's the correct move there for the Knicks. But that is going to be the end of today's video. And I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Thanks again. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. And I will see you all next time.